Welcome Calvary for our story uh, Sunday. It's going to be a good time uh, to hear from her. I got a chance to talk to her last week, spent almost two hours. I tried to cut the time. Fran, I said, I need to go home. Please shorten it. <laughs> but she got amazing story. <clears throat> the story that inspires, <coughs> story that helps <coughs> all of us. Well, let's uh, begin with the word of prayer as he uh, start sharing our story. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. Thank you for Fran. Thank you for all the listeners, both in the in-house as well as online from different parts of the world. God, make this story impacting every life and touching every soul today. Speak to, speak to us through Fran, oh God, and bless us today because we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 There are a lot of special ladies in our church. Among them, there's a one more special lady is Fran Zimmerman. Thank you. Because uh, she has a great heart for the Lord, heart for the church. And you can see her serving both in the house, in the house of God, and outside the house of God. She is such a wonderful uh, woman of God, as far as I know, last four <laughs> years. And you have inspired us. Of course, a lot of women inspire us in our church. You are one of the special kind. Thank so you. we are glad to have you for our story uh, Sunday. Uh, <coughs> I would like to ask you, introduce yourself and uh, where you come from, your education qualification, or maybe job and your family background that may help us to just to get into your story today. Well, as you know, my name is Fran. <coughs> Excuse me, this is health issues. <laughs> and um, I was born with the name Francis Louise mm -hmm. Resek Zimmerman. Um, I was born into a family of six children. Mm -hmm. And um, I graduated from Benson High School. Mm -hmm. um, I did not go back to college until I was 54 years old. Wow. And I got in a... a a social, uh, an associate degree in accounting, which was what I started out right after graduation. Did you try to say that uh, nothing is too late? <laughs> <laughs> yes, nothing is too late. Yes. Um, just like today, you know, every day of your life uh, that you live for the Lord, uh, he'll help you with anything. So don't say I can't until you try. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I got married in, in, in uh, uh, 1963, just six months after I gradu graduated from high school, to my husband, Wally, who passed away um, in 2006. I did a lot of things in my life. Uh, so many jobs that I couldn't even begin to tell you. I actually started out as a um, foster parent. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got my daughter, Dory, um, who I call my chosen child. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I also did a lot of daycare stuff in the house and the job I had the longest with was with the Omaha Public Schools, and I worked for them for 29 years. Wow. I worked in their transportation department, their maintenance department, and uh, at grade schools, junior highs, and high schools. Mm -hmm. North High was the job I had just before I went down to TAC, and then at TAC was where I got the extra, mm -hmm. the extra lift from the Lord. You know, I would just put my hand on any application and pray that if God wanted me to have it, I'd be okay with that. Wow. And if it wasn't, I it wasn't for me. He'd guide me away from it. <clears throat> and the last job I had was for ten years, and I was the um, 
educational technician four that took care of the whole budget for the te technology department. Wow. We need um, technological people in the church, so they are <clears throat> fit to serve us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in that job, I can't tell you how many times my office was a closed door mm -hmm. because um, so many people came to me when they had a problem or an issue. Wow. And they knew that I wouldn't spread their story. I, I would just pray for them. And um, I didn't get any direct uh, opportunities to actually lead any of them to the Lord. But I did give them a lot of information mm -hmm. to help them out. Yeah. And uh, I had some wonderful, wonderful friends, mm -hmm. and they still contact me a lot. That's right. So um, that's kind of the whole thing about the, <laughs> the working part. Okay. <laughs> my well, second child is mm -hmm. uh, Stormy, and I call him my homemade son. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like that. Homemade son. <laughs> okay. Um, I was attending a Bible study, uh -huh. and uh, there was a girl in the Bible study who, who found out she was pregnant, and it was a late-life pregnancy, and she wasn't too happy with it, wasn't receiving it well, was having difficulty really keeping on top of it and not being grumpy and down in the hole about it. Mm -hmm. and wondering why God would do that to her. Mm -hmm. And after our Bible study, we always had a chair in the middle. And she went up to have prayer time, and we prayed for her and everything else. And then we all went back and sat down, and the leader of the Bible study said, there's someone else here mm. that needs prayer. Wow. And it's a like, sort of like Priscilla's. Mm. So I knew she was talking about me. Wow. And so I went up, I, w I went to the chair, and um, I told them that um, I wanted to be able to get pregnant and have a child, and I had had no success. Mm. <clears throat> I have two little angels in heaven. Mm. Wow. And um, so they prayed for me mm -hmm. to get pregnant. Wow. And I got pregnant that night. Wow, <laughs> that's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so I, works. I got my my son had a few uh, problems he caught he could have been born with Down syndrome mm -hmm. disability and um, each time they would pray for me in the circle when they, those tests would come back and um, when he came out, he was perfectly fine. Whoa, that's amazing. Except he was hanging on to his cord. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to hurry a little. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's such hope already at the beginning of your story that, you know, when you come together in the presence of God, God performs a miracle when that is necessary, that yes. is needed. And uh, so a lot of uh, women has hope through her story that you can get pregnant, amen? <laughs> and <laughs> can have baby. <clears throat> that was my first time of telling something in a group. And I just want to encourage everybody always, if mm -hmm. you have not let go of something in your life, no matter how good or bad it is in your group Bible studies, you're missing out on some tremendous blessings. That's right. That's um, right. So I have five grandchildren and mm -hmm. I have eight great grandchildren. Wow. What a legacy. <laughs> I love education. Mm -hmm. And I, the better part of my life, I was educating children in my home or, 
or with the school district by mm -hmm. going and volunteering at the schools yeah. and stuff. Yeah, thanks for sharing the first part of your story, introducing yourself, that's so well done. And I know life is not fair, all of us know. Sometime life takes a left turn. When life turns on the left turn, it is really tough, difficult, hard. So Fred, share with us some of the difficulties and the challenges that you faced in life as well as in the family. Uh, my parents were both alcoholics. Um, it was difficult, very difficult. My dad always worked nights for the railroad. Mm -hmm. And so he would get off work and of course go straight to the bar to close the bar. And my mom always made him a nice meal. Mm -hmm. and. You know, we were all in bed, and he would come home at 1.30 in the morning. And almost every night that I can remember from the time I was old enough, there was something wrong with that meal. Mm. And he'd go in and wake her up and get her out and tell her she had to come out and fix, fix things because it tasted terrible and she hadn't done a good job. And they'd get in arguments and fights, and they were not just verbal, but those were bad enough, but they were physical fights. I uh, witnessed my mother being beaten till she almost wasn't a lot. But my mother was also an alcoholic. She mm. gave in to the life and joined him because she wanted a, some kind of a life with him and tried to, you know, by going everywhere with him. That's a lot already. <laughs> they were both very untrue to each other. And um, it wasn't until my father died um, in 1982 that I was able to completely lead him to Christ mm -hmm. because he always said it was none of my business. His parents didn't tell him. So I needed, he didn't need to tell us where he was at. But right close to the end of his life, he pulled his, uh, respirator out and he turned to me and he said I just wanted you to know that I've been listening and I made myself right with the Lord can you go get mom and so I went and got my mom and brought her in and he apologized to her for the awful life he gave her and asked her to forgive him. Wow. Wow, such a healing. And um, my mom was a Christian. I have a wonderful grandmother. Um, there were eight children in her family, one boy and seven girls. But they were also very into the smoking, the drinking, the fighting. And my dad's family was the same. There were 11 of them. And the same thing went for them. Um, my brother Kurt was the oldest child. And the effect it had on his life was he became a bitter, heavy drinker and, um, and abusive, physically abusive. Mm -hmm. um, he married the first woman and she was the same as he was. But mm -hmm. one night he stumbled into to a doorway and he looked up and it was an AAA meeting place. 
And he met a beautiful woman in there who was the person who gave all the speeches to them. Mm. And they eventually married. Wow. And my brother's life changed in a lot, a lot of ways, except for his bitterness. And um, still a lot of anger in him. Uh, my sister was, Sister Judy, was the second one. She was born the day before my brother's first birthday. <clears throat> the two of them became buddies, but they were both more like my dad. They had the wow. tough personality and kind of rough. And uh, she still, to this day, is very angry and hasn't let go of all that. And mm -hmm. uh, she made it hard on her kids. Um, I came a year and four months after my sister. Mm. And um, my story will be told more in the miracle part. Okay. Um, then four years after me, we had a girl again, and her name was Sue. And Sue never, ever got a grasp, a grasp on life. Um, she never felt loved. She felt alone even when she was with people. She tried to commit suicide twice. Mm. And then the third time was later in her life. She was 47 years old. And she took a whole bottle of her heart medication, and she passed away at 47. Oh, so. um, the next one was a boy. He was named after my dad. And um, he had a softer spirit. And um, he was easier to get along with. He was a good child as a little boy. But he had a tragedy in his life. Um, I was already married by that time. And he was 13 years old. And he had a couple of friends who were a couple of years older than him. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were at the house and my parents were gone. And uh, my dad had heard noise on the acreage out back <clears throat> in the middle of the night and he had taken his shotgun and he had gone to look to see what was going on and um, he came back and put the shotgun way high on the gun rack and um, the boys they got in the house while mom and dad were gone and they wanted to see the gun. And so my brother climbed up on a chair and up on top of the sewing machine and took it off the rack. Mm. My dad had not taken the shells out of the shotgun. Mm -hmm. And when my brother took it down off the rack and shut it, he must have touched the trigger at the same time. Mm. And um, he killed one of his friends. Wow. Terrible. It had an awful, awful uh, lot to do with how his life turned out. Mm. He, he still, um, still struggles with all of it. He is not a Christian either. Um, he, he listens a little bit, but he really calls just because he's lonely. He... Um, he got bit by a scorpion when he was 36, and it damaged his mm. eyesight and his kidneys. Mm -hmm. And so he's had health issues too. Wow. Um, the last one was my baby sister. She was born during my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, She was just like a baby to us. We got married a year later after she was born. And um, so we had her a lot because of the chaos and the problems 
My mom would bring her a lot to my older sister and I, and, and we'd take care of her a lot. My brother did end up, my little brother did end up at my house for the last six months of his senior year so he could pass his courses mm -hmm. and get graduated. She was another one like my other sister who felt like life had dealed her the worst possible thing that ever could happen. Mm -hmm. And um, she never felt like she was loved or cared about, even if she was. Uh, wow. She was married a number of times. And um, she found out she had cancer when she was 50 years old. And um, she decided that since nobody paid much attention to her, but me, that she didn't need to do anything with it. So at 52, um, after I had celebrated my 70th birthday, mm -hmm. or, yeah, birthday with Kathy Williams and Barb mm -hmm. <laughs> and a few other people, um, we got back in off the cruise and I had a message on my phone to call her and she told me that she was dying of cancer and that there wasn't anything they could do anymore. Wow. Um, wow. Of course, over the years I talked and tried to help the best I could. But um, during the, the last um, three weeks she was alive, I then, of course, since I was coming back on the Pacific, or not the Pacific, the Atlantic coast, and she was in Florida, mm -hmm. um, she asked me, you know, will you come on, will you come on down and stay with me until mm -hmm. I pass away? And so I did, and we shared and shared and shared and shared. Mm. And she did accept the Lord. Amen. And she even apologized mm. that she had made the choices she had made because now she knew they weren't right. So the reason I'm telling you all this is we've just celebrated Mother's Day and Father's Day. And men and women, if this doesn't tell you how much you need to be the leaders of your home, to find your way to God and bring your children up in the house of the Lord. And I know there's still some of those kids who can go astray. Mm -hmm. But the importance of having a Christian home for your children to grow up in. That's right. It's so important. Yes. So extremely important. Yeah, thanks for making that point that uh, it's important to create a Christian home. Please. I also had difficulties with my marriage because, of course, at the time and being as young as I was, and not having the backing of anyone to help me know the Lord. I picked a husband very much like my dad. And we had a lot of difficulties. He had so many more good traits to him than my father had though. And, but we had to struggle and we had to work really, really hard to keep our marriage going and make it last. And um, he was not a complete believer until he got in his mid fifties. And then he started turning toward the Lord because my mother came to live with us. And he, 
he basically took care of her because he worked nights in the daytime, and then I took care of her at night. And um, God blessed him when he did that and made that commitment. And uh, it, cha it changed his life completely. Wow. And he did give his life to the Lord after he retired. Uh, and uh, Cody was the person who led him to the Lord. Amen. And he did the same thing my dad did to my mom. He did apologize to me for all the difficulties and for not listening to me sooner and asking God into his life. Wow. Life was not fair at all for you, and uh, he came from a dysfunctional family. But still, there is hope, there is life. You are still here to share your story, right? All of us will know that life is not fair. A lot of us come from a dysfunctional family. But there is a solution, there is hope. You know, there is life. So next question is all about that. Because our story will be just a story if we do not have a person of Jesus. If all of our story as a person of Jesus and all of our story becomes special, right? So Fran Zimmerman's story is so special because of this. That's a third question. And uh, I wanted to share, how did you meet the Lord? You can, if you speak a little louder, that's also good for us. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, uh, you were talking about that uh, you had a special friend and the wise of a special friend. Uh, then about your neighbor and, uh, and the Christian Women's Club and a lot of good things. Share about that story. Um, my older and brother's sister were kind of ornery to me um, because they were like this. Mm -hmm. And then along came me. And they were like, we don't want to do her. <laughs> we just want to do ourselves. Yeah. And they pulled a lot of tricks on me. And uh, mom sent us all out to, to play and the instructions to the two older ones was take good care of your sister keep her in eyesight all the time well they like to um run away and hide <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, i would call for them to to see where they were because i always I'd, tried to stay close so i could see them I didn't care if they were over there playing, but I just wanted to see them, so, so I was okay. Well, one day they didn't answer me. They just didn't answer me and they didn't answer me. And I wandered a little bit, but I couldn't convince myself to just keep looking. I started to get scared because usually they answered me. Even if they were far off, they would... <laughs> They would say something, you know. And so I sat down and I started to cry. And I was just sitting on the ground in tall grass and crying. And all of a sudden I heard somebody say to me, I want you to stop crying. Mm. And I looked up and looked around and I could not see anyone. And that made me more scared. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and started crying again. And in a few seconds, I heard the voice say to me, I want you to stop crying. Mm. And I looked again and I couldn't see anybody and I stood on my toes and I couldn't see nobody. Mm -hmm. And the voice said, I'm going to show you the way home now, so don't wow. be afraid and don't cry no more. And the big wind came up. Wow. The grass parted. Wow. I followed the little path that was spread apart from the other grass, and I walked straight into our backyard. Whoa. <laughs> Well, that's like a movie for us because that's what happens in the movies. 
All of a sudden the wind comes and the grass opens up, people walking. You watch Narnia, you know, these little kids are lost. You know, all of a sudden some magic happens. Whew. So you heard a voice, a standing mm -hmm. voice, and the just, wind comes. Just like anybody normally talks. You got a path to go back to your home. Whew. But since I was only four years old, <laughs> I had no idea who that person was, but they became my very best friend. Mm, the voice. And any time I needed anything, I could talk to that friend. And he would talk to me. He would calm me when I'd put the pillow over my head when my dad and mom were fighting. And he would give me, bring me, relax me. His voice would relax me. And um, from that time on until I was about eight years old, he was my best friend. Wow. My imaginary friend. And I just talked to him all the time. Wow. So when I was about oh, eight years old, the neighbors had a, um, uh, we called her Aunt Nell. It was one of their sisters. And she had had polio when she was young. And she would go out to the picnic table in their yard on Saturday morning. And all the kids knew she'd be there and, she, and they'd come. And we'd sit and listen to her tell us her Sunday school lesson that she was going to teach at Sunday school the next day. So we... You know, it, she taught us, she taught me my first song, Jesus Loves Me. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if it was a couple of years or so, but it was just in the summertime in the good weather. She said to me, um, after everybody left, I always like to linger and just visit with her afterwards. I have an inbuilt great love of older people and little kids that the Lord gave me. And um, she, she said to me, she said, Franny, she said, <clears throat> I've asked everyone to invite Jesus into their heart and, and many of the kids have and you have not responded to that. And I said, well, that's because I have my friend mm -hmm. who I can talk to and who helps me all the time without hesitation. And she said, well, I think your imaginary friend is really Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then she explained some other things to me and that was the point at which I realized that I had the beginnings of a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And even though I kept him as that type of a person in my life, because there was no one taking me to church or anything, um, I started sneaking out and going to Sunday school with some of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, I always had to pay somewhat for it, but <laughs> not anything violent. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a strange thing because my mom and dad both acted totally different around with me when I was alone with them than they did with the rest of the kids. Mm. And I, at those times, I, hang, I hung on to those times because whenever I had to go off and mow lawns with my dad or paint a house or whatever, he was just as like a total different man. Talked to me very gently, very softly, taught me lots of things. And my mother was the same way. When we had her alone by ourselves and my dad wasn't there, she was the same way. She was. She was gentle with us. We had a lot of fun times. Mm -hmm. It was a whole different story. Wow. And my mother never spanked me. Mm -hmm. 
It was Jesus showing me the right type of life to live instead of the other type of life to live. Wow. And they never gave him a... I wasn't perfect. I, I really had a tough teenage life, and I got married against my mother and dad's wishes and um, against the Lord's wishes, too, because he told me not to. But I was lonely. I wanted to be loved by someone that was all mine. And so that's why I got married. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's really amazing. So you heard a voice. And you came to know that the voice is the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, You you told me that your first song was, Jesus loves me, this I know. Can you sing for us? (laughs) Please. (laughs) Are you kidding? I have the worst voice in the world. No problem. Let's all sing and, together, and, amen. <laughs> uh, well, we can sing it together, then maybe yeah. I won't cry. You, you, started, you started for us, come on, go ahead. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Wow, what a powerful song. (laughs) Yes, and to this day, I use it constantly. Amen, amen. The, The brokenheartedness comes back to try to grab you Mm -hmm. when you're sick, Mm -hmm. when you're very tired, Mm -hmm. when you've had something tragic happen in your family, which has never stopped. Uh, And I always tell anybody who I visit with, I, I do some counseling on my own and ministering to people. And I always tell them, I don't care what kind of trouble you're in, just say, Jesus loves me. If you can't say anything else, Jesus loves me. We want to say with you, Jesus loves me. Come on, everybody. (laughs) Jesus Jesus loves me. me. Jesus loves me. And that, you know, because it is, just whisper his name. Yes. Wow. Wow. The next question is very important. You are born again, growing in your faith. And uh, how did you join Calvary? What made you to come to this great church? Um, I started out my um, attending of regular church when um, a boy from American Lutheran Church, which is on 42nd and Boyd Street, used to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, we were dating, and we didn't date, but about maybe a month, if that. Mm-hmm. And um, but his mother and father um, made sure mm-hmm. that they s- kept stopping anyway and picking me up and taking me to church. Okay. And that uh, was when I was about fifteen, and. Um, I, I want to say that I learned the theology mm-hmm. Whoa. of mm-hmm. being in a church like that, but I really didn't have any backing or anything else, and the teenage years are very difficult, very mm-hmm. difficult when you haven't grown up with all of it together. And uh, I didn't really start visiting with um, the Lord and doing Bible study and everything until after I married and came back from California. Wow, okay. Um, What was the rest of it? Oh, no problem. So how did you come to Calvary? What made you to come here? So. Oh, my, 
<laughs> that, that church had to fold because we lost all our members, slowly but surely. And, um, and so I, I visited a bunch of churches and, and um, I, had, I came one morning to visit here at, uh, at Calvary and a pastor was standing at the door down there along with the greeters. Was it no? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked him um, if we could meet after the service because I'd like to talk to him. And <laughs> he gave me a hide, uh, um, hide side hug. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, I, could, I could feel his love mm -hmm. so powerful. Wow. And so I sat down with him after church and I told him that it was very, very difficult for me to leave my other church. It wasn't quite shut down, but it was on, on the way to being shut down. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I can't, I just having a very difficult time leaving it after 30 years. And um, he said, I understand that. But he said, I want to assure you, if you want to go to a church who is more like a family mm -hmm. and knows how to love you when you're ugly and knows how to love you when you're good. That's right. <laughs> presenting yourself well with a smile. Mm -hmm. You need to come here. Wow. And That's a great definition of church, right? It's a family. And I walked out of that after, you know, I walked out of the church afterwards and I knew exactly where I belonged. God affirmed it and oh. I started coming here. That's awesome. You said that uh, you started attending Monday Bible study and there was some healing that took place in your heart. Can you share a little bit about, we have 10 minutes to go. Come on, go faster as much as you can. <laughs> um, Right after I came from, to Calvary in 1989, they had uh, a guy come in by the name of John Marcuso, and he taught um, a year of therapy. He was from Teen Challenge of America, mm -hmm. and um, he gave us speeches and then he, or sermons, sort of like, and then he would take us and put us in small groups, and he'd give us something to do. Mm -hmm. um, it would be like, write all the good things that are going on in your life right now, and then flip the piece of paper and write all the bad things that are going on in your life right now. And then we took a can and we set it on fire. Wow. And we burned that as in incense to the Lord. And that night that we did that particular one. We did this for a whole year with different things. I, he said, you, you can't always go to that person and ask them for forgiveness um, or get things right with them. Um, but you can always, you, you can still talk to them yeah. as if they were still alive. And I went out to my dad's grave. <laughs> mm. One of the hardest things I ever did in my life. But I, I knew at that point that I needed to get it done once and for all. Mm. And I told him all the things I wished he would have done that he didn't do, like read me a book, hold my hand, take me for a walk. Mm. Wow. And I knelt down and and the Lord helped me to to tell him I forgave him. Mm. Wow. That's powerful. <clears throat> I 
Thank you. Thank you. That was a powerful healing. <laughs> well, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the miracles thing. Oh, that's another big question because she's a walking miracle. Definitely, she's a walking miracle. Share more about that. Uh, what kind of uh, disease and uh, what happened and uh, what the doctor said about that, how long you will live. But you are still here, over 77 years, I'm sure. Sorry, I said your age to people. <laughs> <laughs> if I looked as bad <laughs> as I felt, I'd mm. be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, go ahead. Thank yeah. God. Um, I went into the emergency room at Emmanuel with 107.4 fever. Mm. Um, I was in and out of reality. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, all, all of a sudden there were just, the emergency room was so full of people. I was just like, what's going on? And then I'd go out of, and then I'd wake up again, you know? And so I just had all these huge amounts of people. They sent Wally outside because they were gonna do a bone marrow test. And when they did the bone marrow test, the doctor said to me, honey, please quit, quit hollering because it couldn't be hurting that bad. And I said, I'm not hollering. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, yes, you are. Mm. And your husband's been in here twice to check on you because he hears you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then after, after they got me into the hospital and, and settled into a room, um, they told my husband that I probably would not live 24 hours. Mm. They, wow. From the tests they had taken, emergency stat tests they had taken, there was no explanation. Mm for why I was having this horrible fever. Wow. Um, I was in the hospital 10 days and they said, we're gonna let you take her home. Mm -hmm. She's in bad shape, but there isn't really anything we can figure out to do for her. And most people recuperate better if they're at home. She may last a week, she may last three weeks, she may, might even last three months. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be a miracle if she does. Wow. And um, I decided I didn't like laying in bed and being waited on and um, feeling as bad as I felt. And I thought, if I'm gonna feel this bad, at least I'm gonna get up and start moving. So I did, it was very long before I could actually get out of the house mm -hmm. and then get down to the fence and hang on the fence mm -hmm. and walk around to get my strength built back up. Wow. A girlfriend took me to No Name uh, where you can get good vitamins because by then they had found out that I had Epstein-Barr viral hepatitis. Mm which is uncurable and you carry it in your body and the, the side effects are, are very deep, like medicated type sleepiness all the time. And it just kind of comes and goes and so does insomnia. And it just weakens your immune system more and more and more as it goes along. That was in 1994. Mm. Wow. 1994. <laughs> so, God has his way whether you like it or not. <laughs> and you might as well use every bit of it to do everything possible mm. to uh, take care of yourself first because you can't take care of nobody else until you take care of yourself and keep your spiritual life tight with him. And, um, and he'll lead you and bless you. Uh, the thing I do as a ministry is caregiving. And um, I also uh, 
you know, like we'll take people to the doctors for outpatient surgery and stay with them for 24 hours or bring them to my house, now my apartment wow. even. And um, I love doing it. I can't tell you how blessed I am for everything I've done that way. Wow. And I want to tell you about one more miracle because, um, well, maybe two if we can get them in real quick. Mm -hmm. um, the two little angels I lost were mm -hmm. little girls, um, and I lost them before birth. Um, one from a car accident, and they gave me too much medication and caused me to abort, which does not mean <laughs> the bad way <laughs> it happened from the medications. And the second one was um, a hydidified mold growth grew on the afterbirth and suffocated the baby. Mm. Um, when they, when they, the, I had to have the DNC to have the baby removed and everything. Um, they said they were scheduling me for a DN, or a hysterectomy the next morning. And um, at that time, Pastor Danachek's daughter, Jane Goble, who was a secretary here, had found out that she had MS. And he was there visiting her, and he came down to visit me, and I asked him about her, and he said, she, she does have MS. We have found that out for sure. And he said, um, how are you doing? And I said, not so good. And he said, well, I know, you know, that you've lost the baby, but is there something else? And I said, yes. They want to do a hysterectomy on me. Mm. And I was about 25. Wow. And hadn't had any children yet, just my chosen daughter. And he, he, he said, well, let's pray about it. And when he prayed about it, one of the things he said in it was, Lord, will you give her a confirmation as to whether she should have this hysterectomy or not? Because they said I had suspicious cancer mm. in the cells. And, um, and when he, he, he ended the prayer and everything, and when he turned to leave the room, I saw a visible white cross on the back of his suit jacket, mm -hmm. and I took that as my answer to not do it, that there was a reason not to do that and allow them to do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's my, powerful. My, my tests, tests for a whole year were suspicious, and then they just suddenly stopped just like that. Wow. That's and powerful. I got pregnant with him in. <laughs> <laughs> No suspicious cancer. It's and gone. The, in the Jesus other one name. I got to tell real quick <laughs> is is yeah, about really Jody. Run. Time is running. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, is, it includes Jody. Mm -hmm. uh, you all know who Jody is. We had a women's retreat out at Mahoney State Park, mm -hmm. and um, you know we we you all do your sharing and everything else, and Jody came up to me afterwards and she said I want to follow you home mm. and I said okay and so she followed me home and we got out of the car and we went inside and she took out her oil and she said I want to uh, put oil on your doorways and put a protection around your home mm. and um, and she did that and we visited a little bit, and then she left. Mm. A couple of days later, I was getting ready to go to bed. And in my house, my windows were high in the bedrooms. And um, I just walked in the bed, bedroom, and the Lord said, get up on the bed and look out the window. And I was like, get up on the bed and look out the window. What are you... <laughs> What's this all about? And when I looked out the window, there were 
tall, tall warriors mm. walking to and fro with double-edged swords, mm. illuminated white, walking to and fro around my, uh, my home, uh, around my whole home. Wow. <clears throat> Did I see them again? No, but I knew they were there. Mm -hmm. I knew it all the time. And I wasn't, you know, I was so at peace. It was just amazing. Yeah. And it stayed with me. Okay, yeah. so I left my house and moved into the apartment. Mm -hmm. I stopped by my house while it was empty on, and up for sale. And um, I needed to go to the bathroom when I was out shopping. And it was still not sold. And I walked out of the bathroom and... The Lord said, go into the TV bedroom. And so I turned, and it was all empty, of course, but I turned and I walked in that room, and I saw a funny hole in the wall, mm. and I thought a nail had popped. So I called Jerry and told him and we met there the next morning, and Jerry said, did you go outside and look at the hole? And I said, no. And he said, well, let's go outside and look at it. And we looked at the hole, and we came back in, and he said, help me find the bullet. Mm. And I said, what do you mean, bullet? Mm -hmm. He said, that's a bullet hole. Mm -hmm. And it was laying on the floor. Wow. It came in at an angle. If I had been sitting in my recliner chair watching TV, it would have hit me right in the back of the head. Wow. So, needless to say, I was confirmed that I had moved out when I should have moved out. Mm. And when I got home, I thought to myself, wait a minute, where were the warriors, Lord? Mm -hmm. And he said, I sent them to your apartment. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and I immediately got on my knees and prayed for the young lady who was going to buy my house. Wow. That the Lord would send those, another set of warriors back to protect her mm -hmm. because she was just a young woman on her own. Wow. Thank you for sharing. I know we are there's, running out of time. So I, as I mentioned things. in the beginning, she but, has a lot of stories. So I, 40 I, minutes I, is not enough. Anyway, so uh, as, as we come to the close, mind. yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, kindly tell us as we wrap up your story, uh, uh, tell us uh, how you grow in the Lord every day, plus also your encouragement for our congregation. Well, as most of you know that are strong Christian couples, it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's not fun and play. Mm -hmm. it's, it's to... Uh, Get yourself to understand that you can be loved so much more than you can even imagine. And that feeling of love can cover so much of the bad in your life. Mm -hmm. And that secure feeling you have when you're reading the Bible, when you're praying together, when you're praying along, uh, your, your daily, daily walk is what puts it all together and blessing others with any of the gifts God has given you to bless others with. Wow. <clears throat> My favorite two Bible verses are Matthew 19, 26. Mm -hmm. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. Yes. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Isaiah 41, 13. For I hold you by your right hand. Mm. I, the Lord, your God. Not anybody else's. Not the wicked people in this world. Mm. But each of us that turn to him. And I say to you, don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. My two favorite 
hymns. I, I could delve into hymns and preach on it for a year. <laughs> they speak to me like he speaks to us. Mm-hmm. In the garden. The first time I heard that song, I, it was at a funeral. And it moved me so deeply. And from that point on, I would visualize myself during my devotions um, that I'm in that garden. And it was usually early in the morning when the dew was on the roses. (laughs) And he walks with me and he talks with me. Praise the Lord. And in my lifetime, he has always talked to me. I had no doubt who it was. (laughs) He was always talking to me. Amen. Um, And then the other one I have is, it is well with my soul. Amen. (laughs) It is well with my soul. I have no doubt. Mm. And I hope there's no one out there and no one in here who doubts or wonders where they're going to go when the Lord is ready to take them home. I hope you don't doubt. If you doubt, start working on it. So that doubt goes away and is no more. Amen. Um, My encouragements, I've given a lot of them to you through my talk. I know you've heard a lot of that and you've maybe heard it before, but maybe it drives it home a little bit more. The importance of having a life with Christ at a young age. Uh, your gratefulness to the Lord for the fact that you were raised in a Christian home. Mm-hmm. And um, th- that daily walk, you have to be in touch with him constantly. It almost gets so like you get to the point where you're so relaxed that you're just in his presence and in his, your, he's in your thoughts and you're walking and walking his ways. Uh, my last little message for you is the word amen. Amen. Hey. <laughs> A, agree with God. M, move with God. E, engage with God. And N, never doubt God. Wow. That's... Wow. Wow. What a sermon. Let's all stand up. <laughs> wow, the sermon. What a message. Thank you, friend. We will not be, not be singing the last song because time has passed. Let's pray and uh, go from here. Father, we thank you so much for the story of friend. Miracles after miracles, healings, restoration, a spiritual awakening that happened in her life. And you were the special friend. And she could hear you were crystal clear, a stunning voice and booming voice. The voice behind us every day, a voice before us, voice around us through your word, the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, so we say amen to you, Lord. <laughs> We say amen to all stuff that's going on in our lives. Because you are aware of that. And we say amen. Even for miracles, healings, restoration, life, breakthroughs. And we say amen. We say amen for your salvation. For our family members. For our lives. Oh God. We say amen for physical prosperity in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We love you. Even as we go from this place, go with us, bless us together, bring us again uh, uh, this week to celebrate your name together in your presence and give us a blessed week in our jobs, in our works, in our families, and all the adventures that we take, oh Father. Keep all of us safe and sound and inspire us every day. Help us to walk with you. 
Now, children of the Most High God, I come into the land of our Father. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go with peace. Serve the Lord. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.